I like to celebrate wrestling. Someone on the internet the other day made a thread that said I was now downtrodden and cynical. Yeah, I saw it. I got eyes everywhere. But it's just not true. I love all of wrestling. All of it. Even the crap stuff. That also means I love the good stuff even more. I've long realised that while it's cool to criticise and critique, we should do that. Ultimately, when all is said and done, we should also just enjoy pro wrestling for what it is, because that makes it all the more fun to watch. It makes me happy. It makes me pleased. So with that said, I'm Simon from WhatCulture.com, and this is the 10 best WWE segments of 2017 so far. Number 10, Samoa Joe's debut. I'm so happy Samoa Joe is in the WWE, I sometimes pinch myself to make sure it's actually happened. It was a big enough deal when he made his way to NXT, but even there he was told he probably was never coming to the main roster, and now he's here. Oh, lovely. Making a big splash when he attacked Seth Rollins, and injured him in the process, whoops. It was an awesome debut for Joe as he arrived on the scene as Triple H's henchman and made himself look like a monster. It certainly didn't hurt who he had aligned himself with, and actually getting to take someone out for real really helped his credibility. You don't mess with Joe. Now he's flying high at the top of the card and is a proper player. What a world we live in. Number 9. Samoa Joe chokes out Paul Heyman Two entries in and Samoa Joe is kicking all the ass. Who said he'd be no good in WWE? They're crazy. But yeah, when Paul Heyman dared approach Joe during his promo talking down Brock Lesnar, it was never going to be a good idea. It seemed obvious something bad was going to happen, and it did. It was how it went down that rocked. As opposed to the usual WWE segment, this felt all kinds of different. For starters, Joe told Heyman what was about to happen off mic so those in attendance that night couldn't hear what he was saying. This made the whole thing feel oddly real, and when he locked it on a helpless Heyman, it just underlined that, once again, you don't mess with Samoa Joe. All of this felt fresh. It was easily a highlight of the year. Number 8. The Fashion Files I think it's alright to say that every single Fashion Files skit has been great to some degree. It's a pretty good record. Proving that Fandango and Tyler Breeze are seriously underused, the two showed how entertaining they could be with a bunch of hilarious segments that only got funnier as they went on. Better still, this was mostly the duo's own doing. I'm pretty sure these weren't meant to run as long as they did, and as of me saying these words, they're still going strong. A great way to show off talent that weren't being used. Breezango now deserve a proper push coming out the other side. Whether they'll get that is anyone's guess, but they certainly took this opportunity and ran with it. Number 7. The Lesnar Joe Pull Apart There he is again, Mr. 2017 Samoa Joe, this time engaging in an utter war with Brock Lesnar which, once again, felt real. You can kind of see a pattern forming here. But turning up on Raw to exact revenge for his advocate, Brock stood in the ring waiting for the Samoan one to turn up. And then he did, and Joe went nuts. Slamming the beast in the head, Joe actually had the upper hand for most of this, blocking Lesnar's takedowns and smacking him with a super kick. It got better too when a couple of weeks later Joe got the better of Lesnar again and choked him out from behind. Once more, all this just had a proper legit feel to it, making it an easy highlight of the year, when you can believe it's just so easy to enjoy. Number 6. Total Bella's Bullshit Most WWE comedy is hit and miss. We've already shown they can do it with the Fashion Files, but they hit gold twice in 2017 thanks to The Miz, Maurice, and their Total Bella's Bullshit segments. Sending up John Cena and Nikki Bella from the reality show, the couple absolutely nailed what the Cenas were like on it, and The Miz's dry delivery was a spot-on replica for the robotic-like John. Then there were the rips on Cena's bizarre house rules and the always enjoyable punchlines that were so bad, they became good. It did an amazing job in building up to their match that not many people cared about beforehand, and while this was easily the peak of the feud, it didn't matter, because they hit such highs. The Miz and Maurice deserve all the props. Number 5. The Miz's Grandfather Clock And it's back-to-back -back successes for WWE's power couple as The Miz beating the crap out of a grandfather clock that Maurice had bought for him was incredible. Preceded by The Miz having a celebration for becoming the IC champion once again, paranoia got the better of him as he slowly started to realise Dean Ambrose would probably be out there to whoop his ass. Being this was an in-ring WWE segment, it was clear that Ambrose could be anywhere, including an oversized box that did look like it could fit a human. So what else was The Miz to do? He smashed it up of course, breaking Maurice's gift in the process and then getting beaten up by Dean anyway. The whole thing was good from start to finish, so much so if you haven't seen it, you should go and watch it right now. Number 4. Roman Reigns' is his Face Now that sounds like a weird entry, I admit. But 24 hours after WrestleMania 33 on the always entertaining post-Mania Raw, Roman Reigns stood tall and proud 
and it was magic. Getting absolutely ruined by the live crowd, it was a toxic environment from the minute Reigns' entrance theme hit until he eventually walked backstage. Sworn at, booed, insulted and abused, Roman just stood there and took it all in. The icing on the cake though was that he didn't say a word. He let it happen and almost embraced it and this only made the noise grow louder. It got to a point when you genuinely thought it could have gone on all night and not outstayed its welcome. It was a big moment. And then it got better too as Rain slowly lifted the mic to his mouth and simply said, this is my yard now. And then he smirked. It worked twofold because one, he did have a point, and two, it just enraged everyone even more. To say it was perfect would be an understatement, proving that maybe, just maybe, Roman knows what he's doing. Number three, DIY breakup. 2017 is clearly the year of teams breaking up, and one of the best of these happened on NXT where DIY finally fell foul to the oldest curse in the WWE. Seemingly teased for months, Ciampa's heel turn on Johnny Gargano was as hard hitting as it was emotional, fueled forward by months of near misses, all due, in his eyes anyway, to his tag team partner's failings. Eventually, all of this disappointment turned to anger following another loss at TakeOver Chicago. Ciampa snapped, but not after some fine work by WWE, even going as far as to wear the closing graphic that usually signals that the show is finished. It seemed like we had all our action for the evening, and then boom. It went down. Aside from the sheer rage on Champion's end, Gargano's fallen face was money and it was easy to feel absolutely cheated by his betrayal. When the two begin their feud proper, it's gonna be unreal. And this was storytelling done wonderfully well. Number two, Braun Strowman kills Roman Reigns. On April 10th, 2017, during Monday Night Raw, the WWE writers sat down and came up with an idea. Let's have Braun Strowman try to kill Roman Reigns. In what was clearly designed as an angle to build sympathy for the big dog, this was a brutal assault, but let's face it, it was awesome. Interrupting a backstage promo, Braun smashed Roman into a wall and he threw him through a table, caved his chest in with a crate, pushed him off a stretcher before getting him in an ambulance and then upending said ambulance with his bare hands. It's must see TV. Roman selling throughout all of this was top end stuff too and it really did make Braun feel like an absolute maniac. Nobody felt sorry for Roman, which was meant to be the point, but who cared? Strowman had found his footing and it was all the way to the top from here. Number one, the festival of friendship. Going down on the 13th of February Raw, Chris Jericho's nuts concoction was equal parts genius as it was campy, but that all tied into what the point of the whole thing was. Absolutely entertaining from start to finish, it was clear something was going to go down, especially because of the false starts we'd already had in terms of the Jericho-Kevin Owens bromance. You just knew at some point bad times were coming. And then they did. After a roller coaster of emotions, from laughter to sincerity, it hit its peak when Kevin gave Chris a brand new list with Jericho's name at the top of it. Y2J sold it like he'd been hit with a brick, and Owens' attack was as violent as they come. It was a fitting end to a team that had entertained us for close to a year, and easily the highlight of 2017 so far. Know of any other highlights from 2017 in WWE? Let us know in the comments below, and then don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. You can even follow What Culture on Twitter at WhatCultureWWE and read more articles like this on What Culture at WhatCulture.com. I am Simon from What Culture, and enjoy the rest of your WWE year.